Welcome to Ren's Philanthropic Insights video podcast series made to help financial advisors make the most of their clients' charitable giving. I'm your host, Kim Ledger, Ren's VP of Complex Assets, and I brought in one of our experts from Ren, Kyle Christofferson, SVP of Client Growth, to dive into the topic of different ways advisors can leverage DAFs for long-term impact. Give you some background on Kyle. He has over 20 years of experience in pretty much every aspect of creating and administering various charitable gift instruments. He's a frequent presenter at national and regional conferences, educating financial professionals and plan giving officers on how to create effective charitable planning strategies. Welcome, Kyle. Hello, Kim. Yeah, this is the last episode of our first series, and thank you for being my first guest. Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Enjoyed having the conversations. Me too. Me too. We've um, talked a lot about charitable giving, and we've spent a fair amount of time on donor advice funds. Um, So today, let's talk about how financial advisors can collaborate with other professional advisors when it comes to the charitable planning. Sure. Um, I know as when I was an advisor, one of the things that was always important to us was being involved with the clients, um, other professional advisors, their right. attorney, estate right. planning attorneys, their CPAs, um, you know, spent a lot of time with those folks as we as we worked on a holistic plan for our clients. Um, do you have um, any advice to our, the advisors out there on how they can engage with other professionals? Yeah, and uh, you know, again, this is, um, you know, from, you know, my time at Wren and talking with different financial advisors, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, what options they have worked through. And I think a lot of the financial advisors, when I'm speaking to them, they talk about, it's the importance of the referral, right? Right. And to do that, you really have to build up your, um, uh, you know, the trust that you have with the client themselves and make sure that you're providing the good service yes. and you're taking care of their goals and accomplishing those goals. And then they can refer you over to their CPA. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times you're going to have to have those conversations when it's exactly. estate planning and tax planning. You have to bring in exactly. the other professionals, the CPA, the tax preparer, um, the attorney that's going to be drawing up those um, mm-hmm. trust documents if there is going to be additional tools utilized. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only way you're ever going to get a real, truly a comprehensive solution for the clients. I mean, without buy-in, they can put the kibosh on some great, pretty great plans. Oh, absolutely. If right you're at the beginning. Um, trying to fly solo and then they take the plan to their CPA or their accountant before, you know, have a conversation right. with you. Um, you know, it could be misalignment, right? I, I mean, I watched it happen. A financial advisor did not get the CPA involved. We were working on a $20 million complex asset gift. And literally right. the night before the gift was going to be made, the CPA said I, it's too risky. And yeah. they didn't understand what had been put into place, what, you know, the planning that had been done. Cause, yeah. And so my one of my first words of advice is get get with the tax advisor as early in the process as possible. Absolutely. And then they have access to details that exactly. you may not have access to. So um, always a great strategy. But that's an opportunity for you to be introduced to mm-hmm. you know, other professionals, for you to start to build a relationship. You're working on a common goal to accomplish the needs of that mutual client. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's a great way to build that relationship. And then over time, you can refer additional clients to maybe that accountant that doesn't Mm -hmm. Um, For a client that doesn't have one or to that attorney, for a client that doesn't have an attorney and you know they're going to need one of those professionals. So it's just a great way to start that referral network Mm -hmm. source. It's great to have a good good resource at at your fingertips for your clients just in general. Um, Go ahead. And then I would say there's the other aspect of that from building your referral network is you want to start getting out there in the community. And starting to build your network with local professionals. Mm -hmm. And that could be, you know, a number of different ways that you could do that. Obviously, you can go to some regional events, conferences, things like that, where you can. Local um, mixers. I can remember. Local mixers, like local business community mixers. A lot of those, yeah. And you have professionals that have their own firms and they're coming out to support the community. It's a great way Mm -hmm. to be introduced. Wine tasting events. Yeah. Ever gone to one of them? Oh, yes. Um, but also maybe a professional organization. There's some organizations out there that oh, yeah. um, state have, planning councils, it, absolutely yeah, that have attorneys, accountants, and 
you know, CPAs and planners. financial planners involved. Mm -hmm. So that is a great opportunity for you to just to start to network and mm -hmm. um, build up your referral network. Because, you know, maybe you've got a unique client situation that that one particular attorney really has a specialization mm -hmm. in. That's, that's a great point. Um, what about educational opportunities? Yeah, and that's actually a common request that we get a lot of times, Kim, mm -hmm. is financial planners are coming to us and they're putting on an educational event mm -hmm. for CPAs or for attorneys. And you know, I think that happens a lot in the industry where mm -hmm. you're trying to provide some different topics on financial planning that you know maybe would be helpful for the CPA or the attorney to mm -hmm. um, take part in to you know expand their knowledge base as well. Um, but sometimes we get those financial planners that are coming to us. Hey, can you help us put together a presentation for mm -hmm. you know these other financial professionals that I'm going to get in front of and mm -hmm. talk about charitable giving, talk about donor advised funds, and getting those CE credits. You know, Absolutely. providing CE credits yeah. is is always a great way to make friends. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And of course. You know, you always have the online platforms, right? So oh, like LinkedIn, yes, that's another avenue that you can take as well, where you're just building your mm -hmm. online network where you're connecting Great with idea. local CPAs and attorneys. Um, but to do that, you really want to make sure that you're going to be active in LinkedIn. Make sure you're posting yeah. relevant content, um, content that's going to be helpful and beneficial. So they're following you. So they're reading up on, mm -hmm. on those posts and um, it's a great way to showcase your knowledge level and what you can bring to them. Are there benefits to collaborating with uh, other professionals? Uh, I think absolutely there's benefits and probably the biggest benefit is to the client, right? So, Which is obviously the Most best. important yes. <laughs> because that's going to make sure that the client is getting right. the best plan because you've got all of the experts on all sides right. that are coming together to collaborate and provide the best strategy There might strategy be things you've forward. missed. Yeah, you don't know. Absolutely. Maybe, and some, maybe not that maybe missed is the wrong word, but things you just didn't know about. Things you didn't know. Because the client hasn't told you. It minor details that are left out, even though you maybe have asked the question three times and right. you were told something different. But Maybe you just didn't want to disclose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's always good to know. So it's a great way to make sure there's no confusion, there's no facts that have been missed, and, mm -hmm. and the client is the one that's going to win-win out of that. But it's also a way to ensure that there's no... Um, surprises, right? You've got yeah. the best plan. Well, like the one I There's described. not going to be surprises <laughs> yeah. after the tax year is done and realizing oh, yeah. something did not work the way it was supposed to. Um, yeah, exactly. But getting new clients. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be referring your clients over to those CPAs and attorneys that you've built up in your network. Mm -hmm. And also a reciprocation from that is you're going to get some financial planning referrals as well from those mm -hmm. professionals. Especially as you build credibility. Yeah, absolutely. And it takes time, right? This isn't it something does. that you can do overnight. It's, you know, years in the making where you can mm -hmm. build up that network and gain your credibility and trust in the community. Um, and, and then also it builds, like to your point, it just builds those meaningful connections then for the future. Right. Absolutely. Um. When you, I know that you speak with a lot of advisors. Do you um, find that there are some options for collaboration that are more effective than others? Yeah, the the methods that we hear the most about are going to be those educational mm -hmm. um, events that they're putting on for other financial professionals. And uh, you know, a lot of times that's just simply because they're coming to us and they're trying to get the material and and get some assistance yeah. on putting that presentation together, making sure that they've got everything ready to go. So I'd say the educational um, webinars, in fact, I was just speaking with a financial advisor yesterday um, that put on a donor advice fund webinar for a, a group of CPAs in his community. Um, some of them have already heard about donor advice funds. Mm -hmm. Others have heard about it, but didn't really understand how the donor advice fund works. So it was a great opportunity for him to make them aware of, hey, if you've heard about a donor advice fund, you know, I'm, I'm a way that can help you yeah. out on that. And yeah. if you haven't, here's a great strategy that you can start looking at for your clients that's, yeah, that's growing in popularity. Yeah. Um, and I would say also just building that referral network. And that's what mm -hmm. we've seen time and time again, when a lot of times we are working with these financial advisors in developing these charitable planning cases. So for example, mm -hmm. I know you've been involved in East Kim when a client comes to us and they've got a closely held business that they're looking yes. to sell. 
and here's their goals that they're trying to accomplish. And you're going through the goals, you're going through the process, and naturally the financial advisor's pulling in the CPA, they're pulling in the attorney, and they're collaborating together. It's one of the things I insist on right away. Um, Because there are elements to all of that that really requires a tax advisor's um, input that I'm, I'm not going to give advice on. So it's it's imperative to Absolutely. have that, that person involved. Um, so, do, do you find that there's a natural um, time to be connecting with the other? I mean, we've talked about, you know, obvious things like the, um, you know, if you're selling your business um, or, yeah. or you're selling um, a capital asset, maybe is a better way to say that. that would, you're probably working with your tax advisor. Are there other times? There, there are. And I, I think the biggest and most important time of the year when you want to engage with all those other professionals is year end. Yeah. Because that's when everything is coming due. You got to right. get everything done by 1231. So it's in the current tax year. Yeah. So getting ready for year end, being prepared for year end, it's just a great opportunity for reach out to the clients a CPA, their accountant, and mm. say, hey, well, I'm just wrapping up the financial planning for the year. Wanted to make sure and, and verify is there any tax events or tax yeah. issues that we need to plan for ahead of time, just you're, so you're not scrambling at your Yeah, end. and you're more than likely, I would think advisors are doing some of that anyway and looking yeah. at tax loss harvesting, you know, what makes sense Absolutely. in the portfo- portfolio. So it's a great time to have the, the charitable giving conversation as well. Absolutely. I would think. It seems natural to me anyway. <laughs> it does. And year end is the, you know, what, 60% or more of the charitable giving occurs just in the last couple months of the year. So, yeah, or last six weeks, isn't it? It feels like it's the last two weeks. It feels like weeks. it, right? <laughs> it's always a rush. It is. So, um, I guess our advice would be uh, plan early. Plan early. And, and, and I realize we're talking about now. year end, you're, you're looking at what the income, but um, I, I'd start that conversation in November, sometime in November. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And we have a pretty good idea. Um, the last thing you want to do is start that conversation on December 27th. Yeah. At that point, you it might happens. be too late. It happens. Still can get it done, but it's going to be stressful, right? And there's no guarantees. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Kyle. You have been a wonderful guest and for my first series, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. This was a a very enjoyable experience to talk to you about the different terrible planning topics. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Thank you. Thanks for watching or if you've tuned in via podcast, thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about REN and how we might be able to help with your philanthropic program needs, visit reninc.com or email us at consulting at reninc.com. We'd also love to hear if you have questions or topics about plain giving you want us to talk about. And of course, don't miss the great information we have in our Advisors Philanthropic Insights newsletter. Sign up at reninc.com slash advisor insights. Find all the links mentioned in this show in the description. And you'll find expert tips daily on our social channels. Check it out. Until next time, I'm Kim Ledger. Give wisely.